You know what really bothers me? When people affirm possibilities in theory, but not in reality. My favorite version of this is, college isn't right for everyone, but it sure is right for you and the person next to you and the person next to you and any specific person that we ever talk about besides Steve Jobs. That brings me to Sam Altman. That's what I like about Sam Altman. He's not like those people. Sam Altman is the founder of Y Combinator and he was actually cool enough to say the following. If you have the opportunity to join a startup with the potential to blow up in coming years, take it and don't go to college. That is awesome. Shout out to you, Sam. But Sam, there's something else I kind of want to talk with you about here. In this blog post that you wrote, advice for ambitious 19-year-olds, you said some amazing stuff, and I encourage everybody to go read it. It's got some really great stuff. Just follow Sam's blog, it's really awesome. But you say the following, if you stay in college, make sure you learn something worthwhile and work on interesting projects. Check. College is probably the best place to meet people to work with. If you're really worried you'll miss some critical social experience by dropping out of college, you should probably stay. Ah, ah that, that, that hurts to read, that hurts to read. But, but let, me, let me say here, Sam did not go on to elaborate what he meant by if you're worried you're gonna miss some social experience. So maybe what Sam is saying here is that, hey, if, if, you're gonna, if you know you're gonna regret opting out of college because you're going to spend your whole time thinking about how much fun you could be having meeting people your age and all that kind of stuff, then you probably should go because that's better than regretting it. All right, got it, check. I totally get that. But there are a lot of people who actually do make this argument that college is the superior choice for networking and that if you're thinking about opting out, you're going to disadvantage yourself by depriving yourself of this awesome, massive network. And here's the problem with that. It fails to make a distinction between two kinds of networks. The first kind of network is a horizontal network. Horizontal. That means it goes in this direction. It can go in that direction. A horizontal line can go in two different directions. So that's what a horizontal network is. And an example of a horizontal network would be something like, oh, school? Yeah, because one of the hallmarks of school is this thing called age segregation. We take people and we lump them into clusters based on how old they are. The second graders are over here with the second graders and they spend their entire day around people the same age. The eighth graders and the high schoolers and the college freshmen and the college, we, we lump people together in their same age and that's where they spend most of their time. And they do interact with adults. Uh, Rarely do they interact with children in that context, but they do interact with adults and usually those adults are authority figures, leaders, mentors, something along those lines. A vertical network is a network that goes up or down. It's an age diverse network. An example of a vertical network would be like a church or maybe a gym that you go to. You know, you have people who are younger than you there, people that are older than you there. It's an age diverse environment and your interaction with those people is based on the kinds of things you are there to celebrate and create together. And the boundary line between who's the leader and who's the, you know, the follower, that's a little bit more blurry. So if you attend a church and you're part of a choir or you're part of a community choir, and there may be people in that choir that are younger than you, people that are twice your age, well, you're not leading each other, you're collaborating together in a vertical network where different people are at different ages and stages of life. College is a really great place for a horizontal network. And so if you're looking for the best party, the best environment where you can kind of be insulated from the age diverse real world and be around people your own age and have a good time, have at it. College might actually be the best environment for that. Just do me this one favor, don't call that an investment, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a way of spending your money that you totally have the right to, and, and I'm not gonna criticize you for it. Just, just please do me that favor, don't call that an investment. Investment is not spending a whole lot of money to go party for four years and just be around people your own age. All right, but if you really wanna network, 
You need an age diverse network. You need not only people who are your age, but you need people who are at every level of life because that not only makes you a better person, but it also makes you more strategically connected for the kinds of moves you may want to make in life. You don't just want people in your life who might be able to do things for you in five, 10 years, but they don't have any jobs or connections now. You want people who can do those sorts of things now. You want people in your life who can not only speak to you from the vantage point of also being 19, of also being 21, but people who can speak to you from many different vantage points. And here's the coolest part about a vertical network. When you interact with people of different ages in your vertical network, you interact with them as friends. Yes, that's a radical concept that you don't quite experience in school. Someone who's twice your age is someone that you can relate to as friend. And the kind of learning that happens when you have friends of different ages is massively different than the kind of learning that happens when all of your friends, same age, same stage, same mindset, all living in the same neighborhood. I mean, that's fine if that's what you want, but the rest of the real world ain't like that. And the idea that the best way to prepare for the real world is to be in an environment during the prime years of your life, an environment that's nothing like that real world, well, that's what I consider to be a bad argument for college.